So welcome to the next video in Pearson's R and in this part I'm gonna show an example and in this video we're gonna make use of JASP. So let's start. The following figures released by the Federal Trade Commission show the amounts of tar and nicotine content in milligrams found in 10 brands of cigarettes. So this is as follows. So we have the cigarette brand we're gonna uh, redact the names so we have one to ten uh, different brands um, the tar content are as follows in this column and the nicotine content are as follows in the third column what we want to ask is we want to check or to test if there is a significant relationship between the tar and nicotine contents of a cigarette at five percent level of significance so recall that we're going to make use of the four-step procedure first is we're going to make you we're going we're gonna to write the uh, hypothesis and the significance level. So recall that um, we have two, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So in the null hypothesis, there is no significant relationship between the nicotine and tar contents of a cigarette. So there's no um, relationship as follows. And alternative, there is a significant relationship between nicotine and tar contents of a cigarette. So uh, that's what we want to check, but we want to reject the, the null hypothesis. And our alpha is given from the pre previous slide that it is 5%. Now, um, we're going to open this. Step 2 will be running it in a software, and we need to recall the assumptions of the test. So I'm going to use JASP in this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open a file. It's already I have already prepared it and put that in CSV. Um, I'm going to reserve another video for the data cleaning. But uh, for now, we're going to open it. And I have already put it in here. And I'm going to open that one. OK, so we have this. It j just fits the screen, right? We have 10 um, brands from 1 to 10. And we have the tar content and the nicotine content. In order for us to run a Pearson's R, we need to, uh, well, first, it should be in the analysis part, not on the edit data part. Um, if it is edit data, it will look like this. So for um, a basic JASP software, these are all the basic analysis that you can do. What we want to do is to click on the regression and click on correlation. Okay, let's do that. So you'll be given this interface. Um, I guess I need to make the interface a bit smaller so that it will, be, it will fit this uh well it's 150 let me adjust it a bit give me some bit of time maybe a bit smaller hopefully that's gonna make it okay all right i guess that's enough so uh, we have this part, this is the input part, and this is the output part. So in this part, you tell JASP what to do. On the right side, JASP will do it. What we need to do is to input the two uh, variables. Uh, we want to put that in the variable box. We're not going to put that in the partial out box. So we're just going to drag that. We can drag it like this, you know, click on the variable, hold it on your um, uh, mouse, and then put it there. Or you can actually just highlight it and click this right arrow. And you'll be given this, this portion. So before we start with the analysis, we need to check or click or um, tick this uh, the following um, boxes. We want to put that in display pair, display pairwise because it's actually now displayed in a matrix. Um, commonly in APA, we want to put, to show it in a pair, in pairwise display. We want to click on flag significant correlations. We want to click on the sample size just for added statistics. And remember that one of the assumptions of the Pearson's R is linear trend. So how can we check for the linear trend? We need to check the plot, specifically the scatter plot. One more thing before I forget, um, the reason why we just need to input these two variables is that Pearson's R is bivariate. Um, there's no independent or dependent variable, so we can just input both of them. At the same time, we don't really care what goes first as long as they're there, so it can run. So here we go. The scatter plot is already produced, and we can see visually that it has a linear trend. Okay, so you can see the, the behavior of the points. Th these are the dots here. It, it goes upward, and we can actually say in this portion that it's uh, positively, yeah, it's uh, 
positive, it has a positive association. Okay, so since it's a positive cor uh, correlation, it has a, has this kind of association, and the trend and the trend is linear. We can go ahead and proceed with the Pearson's R. Um, what we have here is we compare the tar content and the nicotine content of the ten cigarette brands, and our N is ten. That's sure. And the Pearson's R value is zero point nine five seven. With given the asterisk, the asterisks were produced because we clicked on the flag significant correlations, and it means. When there's only one asterisk, it is significant at 5% alpha level. If it has two asterisks, it is significant for 1% alpha level. And if it has three asterisks, it is significant for 0.1% um, alpha level. So since our alpha level is only 5%, even with one asterisk there, it is deemed as significant. So we can see that our Pearson's R is 0.957. That's pretty much near one. So we have a pretty strong, uh, large correlation or association between tar content and nicotine content. And the p-value says that it is less than 0 0.001. Now, that notation is acceptable as far as APA is concerned. And, you know, there's a significant correlation between the tar content and the nicotine content. So that's that's what we need to do for the Pearson's correlation. So let's go back to the slides. In the slides, I have first produced the linear trend using Microsoft Excel and Jamovi, that's another statistical software, still generates the same result. Since there's a linear trend, we can go ahead and uh, test the hypothesis using Pearson's R. And from the JASP results, results and using Jamovi as well, it shows us the same exact results. So the Pearson's R is 0.957 and the p-value is less than 0 0.001, which is similar to what we have just produced in this case, right? Um, Jamovi only displays it like that because it shows a correlation matrix. Well, we can do that in R, uh, sorry, in, in, in JASP. We just need to uncheck this pair, display pairwise and it will give us the same thing. Okay, but you know, display pairwise is the standard in, in creating tables in your results and discussion. So we're going to leave it that way as in pairwise display. Okay, so it's loading, but we got the already the answer. That's, that's the correct answer there. And we're going to go ahead with step three. Remember, step three is the decision rule. So the decision rule follows that since our p-value is uh, less than 0 0.00, what can we conclude that there is a significant relationship between the nicotine and tar contents uh, of a cigarette brand at alpha 0 0.05? Now, if there's a significant relationship between two variables, we don't stop there. We need to understand or determine how strong and where the direction is the relationship, okay? So with this, um, we are actually just to f need to determine the value of R and, uh, you know, determine if it is strong or weak and the relationship uh, that is the, the, sorry, not the relationship, the direction that is determined by the sign of R, re recall that. So the sign is uh, the direction, the strength is the value. So we can refer to the effect size chart by Cohen in 1988. And the strength is 0 0.957. It has a large effect and it is has a strong correlation. And the direction, is, it's positive. So it's positive 0 0.57. It can also be shown in our JAS results. If nicotine content is high, tar content also tends to be high and vice versa. So this is the, the effect size chart by Cohen. This determines um, the effect size or the strength of the association uh, between the two variables. So if it's 0 0.5 to 0 0.99, the association is al already large. So it, since we have 0 0.95, actually we can say that since it's near one, it, it's very large. We can, we can actually um, say that because it's near the perfect correlation. So uh, this is also a, a crude guide on the ge general strength of correlation coefficients by Champion, 1981. Some have or tend to use a different chart, but the effect size chart is more the one that we're gonna we're gonna use uh, mostly in, in the next upcoming video in here. So how do we 
say the final conclusion then. So therefore, we say that there's a large direct relationship between a tar and nicotine contents of a cigarette at alpha 0.05. And one implication of this result is that, you know, if you have a cigarette box only indicating the nicotine but not the tar content, and the nicotine value is quite high, you can almost conclude that the tar content is also high. Vice versa on the, on the, on the opposite side. So we're going to stop there. Um, I hope you learned something in that video. And um, this is, I'm just going to show you again the JASP thing, uh, the, the, the what you need to click on the JASP. That's going to be enough as far as the assumptions are concerned. And yeah, that's going to be on this video. Uh, that's all going to be on this video. So thank you very much. I hope you learned something. And um, I'll see you and catch you up in the next. Uh, thank you.